plan to do is create some text in Wings 3D and then transfer it over to Bryce. To do this in Wings 3D, um, right click to bring up context sensitive menu and you can see the menu is a bit different from the last video and that's because this is the latest version of Wings 3D so I went to the website and downloaded the latest version. So if I can't find any controls it's because things have changed slightly. What we're going to look at in this menu is text. If you just click on text it'll generate the last text generator from the, within the text dialog but if you've not done it before you need to set things up because there's a bit of a problem at least there is in Windows and that's all I know about Windows I don't know what happens on the Mac so I'll show you how to set things up in Windows if you click on this little button it brings up the dialog you've got your text that you're gonna have the uh, number of edge bisections is a complexity that it generates from the true type font the difficulty is and if you click this question mark there's an explanation that in, in Windows, the Wings 3D can't look into the fonts folder. So what you need to do is copy the fonts folder somewhere else so it can find the fonts. So I'll do that. I use my com computer here. Uh, drive C, Windows. There's the fonts folder there. So I go into that. Press Control A to select everything. Press Control C to copy it. And go into the a root directory of drive C, a new folder, and I call this fonts folder for wings, and double click to go into that, and press control V to paste, just paste a few things. Now I have discovered, at least the last time I did this, that it creates this conflict because there's some with the same name. So uh, I'll just copy and keep both files. So if you select this for the conflicts, this is a few, then that allows it to get through that. I don't know what the implications are of that. Just uh, just need to get through it and get on with the tutorial, really. We'll worry about that later. So in here, right, I'm going to enter my text. So I call it twist, tw t w i s twisted. Uh, I'm going to keep the number of edge bisections the same, and I'm going to browse out my folder now. So this is going to be in drive C here and I should see where I've saved it fonts folder for wings double click on that then I can pick my font out I'm going to choose a, a fancy looking font H G H I J there it is Jokerman okay so open that that will then change that path and then press OK and then it generates the font which can sometimes take a while depending how much text so here we've got our font now these edges are quite sharp as they stand and for rendering purposes I've discovered is if they chamfer them down things to look, tend to look a bit better but the difficulty is selecting all these edges to bevel them as an alternative path select this is the edge selection tool here so select an edge which is oh. Well, it's not really an edge, it's just a, a line linking two points, or vertex, as they call them in wings. This is along the thickness of the letters, and then by pressing the I key, that will select all identical lines, which is all the ones because it's all the same thickness. Then switch to face selection, and right click, and go for extrude, and extrude normal, and moving the mouse left and right, you can see that uh, you can you can choose a level of extrusion. I want to choose a little bit of extrusion. What I want is about a 45 degree chamfer. Uh, I'm using the clicking on the middle button of the mouse to switch it into this rotation mode just so I can see. Um, and if I press A, I think it centers it on the object center the, of, of the selection. So if I wanted it focused on this corner, select that face there and press A. But I want all those faces selected as I had it before, so I'm going to have to go back and try and select all those faces now. This is one way of doing it. Get it right down the line of the letters. Just check the other end to make sure that I've not clipped any of the... I can't really see that. Or, or since I was on this topic, Control z takes you back one step. If you hold down Control alt and z it allows you to take you back multiple steps. So you can go back to the point where we're on the lines and go to face then extrude again. I think it saves about 50 steps as default, I'm not sure, but it's handy facility, so I've extruded it a bit and I'm looking down on this bottom corner and now 
I want to use scale axis Z that's on the thickness and then that allows me to put me a little bit of a chamfer on I want it about 45 degrees so that looks about maybe a bit about 45 degrees there and the reason for that is we're going to look at when you do the import options between the different modes you can save it in the different formats then uh, you they ha it affects whether it comes in smoothed or unsmoothed but uh, uh, this is quite uh, quite a subjective thing how much smoothing you need if you've got flat surfaces and curves which is why I'm going to select all I select the entire object then select the vertices is that vertices I think they're called that it's just the corner all the points that it's made up of and uh, I'm going to twist it using the deform tool here so deform and twist and it's going to be on the x-axis so you can see that's the level of twist but I only want to twist it a little bit slightly certainly no more than 45 degrees because I want the corners to be sharp but the faces to be flat but since they're, ma they're made up of discrete triangles it's going to be quite a trick getting them flat so this is going to allow us to investigate the uh, the smoothing options for meshes in Bryce so that's my setup I'm going to file and export in 3ds format so twisted and then it'll take a moment you can see a progress bar on the bottom if it's taking any length of time export wavefront and obj format and just uh, this takes a little bit longer and i wonder if that's because it's processing the smoothing i oh, can see the progress just there now we'll switch over to bryce and go file import object and I'll pick up the 3DS one first and uh, we'll have just move the camera in so we can see what we're doing All right, I'll land it so that's at the bottom there I'll just have a quick render of that so now uh, you can see or perhaps you can just not very clear but there's some facet it's faceted because these these are all it's on smooth so all the faces are perfectly flat now we'll file uh, import object and we'll bring in the obj for that one uh, there's this dialog for materials I don't really know how that works because I've never used it so I just check that and say yes and then you can see that this one's come in and it's overly smoothed so it's got these smooth where it should be smooth but the flat areas because they're not quite perfectly flat are also smooth and indeed even if it was perfectly flat as far as the geometry was concerned because it's made up of individual triangles it'll still try and smooth them so um, and it's coming the wrong way around so I'll just flip that round the other way so you can see better that the lights falling on it right how to overcome this well if we go to edit we can unsmooth it and that should make it appear as the one below so that's fair enough now now there they're both unsmooth but they've got a slightly faceted appearance so I'll edit it again and if I set this angle just below 45 degrees so they've got 43, 47 I don't know whether I can I can't enter a figure in there I've never tried that before 43 right that's just below 45 this should result in having flat faces because they are part of the smoothing process so there's no facets appearing on the flat faces because of the angles uh, are very shallow uh, but the corners remain sharp so we'll see whether that's occurred or whether I've got it wrong I think I've got it right see we we'll want the, the chamfering on the corner bit which we did before that looks quite like quite a sharp corner there doesn't it there's a chamfer there I've done very subtle chamfers this time round I want to make this uh, oh you can see it on that there now we're, while we're in close just move that around a bit now you can see that that inside edge there is just catching the the light which is good for if you've got material options and specularity and you can you can show things up and pick up the edge nicely and for these uh, top sections where it should be smooth for, for this area here then the the smoothing process has taken place so that's that's turned out okay so uh, that's more or less everything I wanted to show you a bit fiddly but once you've uh, once you've set it up in wings then uh, if you produce more text you don't have to go through the same process you can just uh, 
go into the dialog here I want this is more text and browse out we'll go for Vedana if I can find it that okay okay then we get some different text so once you, once you've uh, set that other folder up and pointed wings at it that's fine so all that remains to be done is to produce a nice render from the from this text you can see there's a little bit of a smoothing issue here I think that if I raise the angle up to under 90 I'll just show you what happens when it's not then we'll get this horrible shading issue again with the with it trying to smooth the, the flat surfaces if you go really high I think that just more or less does everything yeah so it's going to eventually hit the corners so like I say un under 45 seems to be the trick for this like so okay right I'll, I'll complete some kind of uh, render for the title with that but uh, essentially that's uh, that's it the end of the tutorial